No. I'm not worried at all. I rely on God. Allah. In Surah Al-Fahd, Ayah 6, I want you to notice here how Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us how the Munafiqeen, what are their thoughts? Do they have Husnuddin Billah? Do they have good expectations from Allah? What is their expectations from Allah? Uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us here and that He may punish the Munafiqeen, uh, man and woman who think evil thoughts about Allah. They think bad about Allah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala goes to say that it's not only the Munafiqeen that think evil thoughts about Allah, it is the disbelievers, the Mushriqeen. You know SubhanAllah, from my own experience, I've given many lectures in Islam Awareness Weeks and different Dawah related events. I would see many um, quote-unquote inquisitive Muslims. Remember that you're at a Dawah event, many non-Muslims are there. And you have many uh, quote-unquote inquisitive Muslims directing negative statements about the deen and also about Muslims. This underhanded approach where you make these negative statements, you don't even have really sincere questions, but it's almost like an accusation and asking you to explain, okay, justify this thing from the deen. Why wasn't there a woman who was a prophet? And it's a Muslim who's asking this question. How come they can have like polygamy in Islam and all the Arabs are racist, you know, to, to black people? Like, you know, subhanAllah, there's something wrong with your heart when you direct and you ask these types of questions and the way you portray Islam in these types of ways. And you have uh, some speakers who do that too. I've seen times and I am so embarrassed, you know, having a speaker who will just come out there and start talking bad about Muslims. So you're here at Islam Awareness Week, supposed to be talking about what Islam is. You're not talking about the state of Muslims. It's not a tajdeed in Islam lecture. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not a lecture about reforming Muslims. That's a different issue. That's a legitimate issue about reforming Muslims. You reform Muslims based on Quran and Sunnah, not your legitimate or your illegitimate opinion based on secular liberalism. Okay, you base it upon Tawheed to reform Muslims. So you don't do it from there, but then you come across this accusatory tone in the scandalous way, trying to show, hey, you know, I'm hip, I'm cool, like, look, I'm, you know, I can call out my own community and stuff like that. You're trying too hard. There's a Canadian doctor who works with a lot of addicts, overcome their addictions and things like that. He's a non-Muslim, but he encourages spirituality, that this is important for a human being to um, have a spiritual c connection because that will help you overcome, you know, addiction and trauma and all of these different types of things. But one of the things that he noticed, his observations, was that most of the people that were addicts, they had a bad outlook on God. They had a very negative perception of God. Uh, a really interesting dynamic to see within their psyche that on one hand, they're atheists. They say they don't believe in God. But on the other hand, they only kind of believe in God, but in a negative light. And you see atheists too, right? Many atheists deep down inside, they actually know that God exists. But their perception of God is that, oh, God is not merciful. God is you know punishing. How come I have these desires and I can't be free and roam free and do everything I want with my hawa and things like that, right? Atheists actually have a really bad perception of God. Like the way they talk about God, oh, how could a just God allow such and such thing to occur? So their perception of God is really negative, okay? It's an evil outlook. But you know, SubhanAllah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala told us this internal thought, this internal feeling that the Munafiqeen and the Mushrikeen had is that they think evil thoughts about Allah. Whereas uh, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala tells us in some of the previous ayat in, in ayat three to four, in that same surah, that Allah says, and that Allah may help you with a strong help. It is he who sent down the asakina into the hearts of the believers that they may grow in faith along with their present faith. SubhanAllah, when the believers undergo any type of trial, tribulation, true believers, when they undergo this trial and tribulation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He sends them this help. What is this help? What is the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's this sakina, this calmness, this tranquility, this ease, this peace into their hearts. And what happens is that it will increase their faith along with 
the iman that's already present. So there needs to be iman already there. A manifestation of iman is that you have husnul dhun billah. That you have a good outlook, perception, expectation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think good about Allah. You always look at the uh, blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You always perceive every situation as a benefit for you as a believer. And you believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about the Muslims today and all the different fitan that we face. You, fa you face fitan living here in the West relatively in peaceful circumstances. Recently, of course, there are different incidences that have occurred that have threatened the peaceful existence of Muslims. But relatively speaking, uh, your fitna is on an ideological level. People will know more about social sciences than they know about their own aqidah. They have really no idea of the sharia. They have no under, uh, like uh, the usul of the deen. They have no idea about like aqidah and tawheed and all of these different things. And their biggest struggle is to retrofit Islam, to take pieces of Islam, to fit and please the system that's been created by the West. Essentially, their, their biggest fitness to show, hey, I am a human being that deserves respect and has value. Even though I look different, you know, I really think the same way as you do. It's just a different way of thinking about it. They're willing to keep changing and conceding on different, uh, you know, parts of the Sharia, different parts of fiqh. They're willing to concede, continuously concede and concede and concede until there's nothing left. If you have a land, you're in charge of a land, you're a Muslim and you're in charge of a country and you keep conceding that land, soon there's nothing left. You've given it all up. It's completely occupied. And so the same thing, you can continue to concede, 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 concede until there's nothing left of your deen. There's really nothing left of your deen. Fitna for you know, Muslims in countries and places that there's a lot of political turmoil, there's maybe a lot more on the line and in terms of like their own safety and security and so forth. And so they have all this fitna. Now, you can retreat and continue to give up and have bad thoughts about Allah. Or you say, this is what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, promised us. You know, the Muslim that's holding on to their deen, say, this is what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, promised us. Didn't Rasul say, in a hadith, that a day would come when hanging on to your deen is like hanging on to a hot coal. I'm going to hang on to that hot coal. Because I have husnul dun billah. I have a good expectation. I believe in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has spoken the truth. Our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has spoken the truth. You, you believe in that. You know, a Muslim who's fearing their safety and security, bring it on. This is what Allah and His Messenger وسلم, promised us. The test is now because the Akhirah is forever. The test is in the Akhirah. The test is now. And you're even more firm in your faith. But then the Munafiqeen, their hearts are like, listen, we got to run. We got to give up. We got to concede. You know, let's change the deen. It's outdated. It's, it's not modern. We have to modernize the deen. We have, need to liberalize the deen. We need to make it palatable. Uh, to the people around us. It's too bitter for the people around us. Also a mistake that often we do, we're really critical of like the way, like say Arab governments are acting or Muslims in other faraway lands are acting and behaving. What about here? How are you facing your fitna every day? You know, what are you compromising of your deen? How are you trying to like stand up for the truth where you are at? I want you to think about it. What's happening with our communities? Are we creating the leaders, um, in the manner of like the sunnah of our Rasul Sallallahu that there is unity, there is planning, there is strategy, there is togetherness, there is uh, some type of advancement within our communities, like growth. We can see that we're not just reactionary, that we actually have our own ability for independent, you know, strong thought, being able to uh, uplift the affairs of our community and at the same time positively engage with and interact uh, the greater community by bringing them to the deen of Islam. Where are we at uh, here? We should be very critical because we compromise every day. We're actually compromising on multiple levels every single day. And for most people, they don't know the extent of what they're compromising because they actually don't even know a lot of the basics of their deen. That's actually the saddest part. You know, what I came to realize is that unfortunately too many Muslims 
have a very poor understanding of the usul of the deen. They might appreciate motivational like type lectures a lot, but they don't go beyond that. They don't know how to build anything. Yes, they can be motivated and think, okay, it's good and I'm proud to be Muslim. Okay, what does it mean to be Muslim and can you hold your ground when you're talking about Tawheed with just a lay person? For most people, they cannot even properly speak about Tawheed in a basic way, talk about the Sharia or talk about the fiqh of the deen or talk about the basic principles or even to talk about the evidences of the Quran and the Hadith like people are having a very difficult time but oh give me this motivational lecture that's trending with like the latest you know uh, topical thing within society and yeah that that person sounds wonderful look at this it should be on a poster so a motivational saying in a poster doesn't build a society okay you need to read books you need to read um and know your dean you need to go into depth especially if you're living in a society where there is a massive effort to academically and intellectually uh, attack uh you know the muslim mind there are literally think tanks entire academic institutions that uh build not only their own infrastructure in terms of like their ideas and their ideology and their systems but how to dismantle other people's but subhanallah because we do have a few people who do stand up for this deen and know the basics of their deen, they're able to resist that. Some of the intellectuals who are resisting some of these ideas that before were like flatlining Muslim beliefs, they had no idea how to respond to it. Now you see many famous atheists, famous Christian apologetics and things like that reverting to Islam. We have the solutions within our own community, within our own history, within our own tradition, but we're just not connected with it. I actually have the, that book that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah wrote on dismantling arguments of Greek philosophers. He made those arguments hundreds of years ago. And like for people who are getting like spun around with atheist arguments, if they just took the time to read some of these classic works, they wouldn't do that. Actually, they would be very effective du'at. Khair inshallah, we'll change that. We'll change that inshallah because we have a positive hope in the promise of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Husnudhan, hope, is part and parcel of the characteristics of true believers. Cynicism, the lack of hope, despair is part and parcel of the characteristics of the munafiqeen.